hello, I'm live. Nice to start that today. <laughs> I'm plugging in my ears. <laughs> really? So, welcome to Ask the Channel. Ah, Maria Christina, nice to have you. Nadia, hello, I hope you're well. How is it going? A little bit of music here, we need. Yeah, I'm going well. Hi, Gabriela. Hi, Anna. Nice to have you, Gabriela and Anna and everybody here. Ah, I'm sure. Thank you, Nadia. And you are... Um... Sorry, I love music. It just brings my energy very positive and very and uh, that's such a gift to be able to just be positive in one minute really hi Indre Mariam Salak hi everybody so so let's start so here it's a, a session about asking for guidance and you know I'm always channeling the um, the energies and I feel and I'm you know I feel whatever needs to be said and I am guided in what I'm saying so it's it's really a spiritual session for everyone sharing my teachings and my channeling yeah music brings instant joy Okay, so, so this, this, um, this session, uh, I was thinking about the topic today and it was really around our relationships. So I don't know if you agree with me and you are absolutely uh, invited to, to, give me your comments about the subject first and then we can start hello martin oh my god we have a lot of people coming so hi zoe so it's about relationship today anything you want to comment before i start and i received also a beautiful question from someone who asked me when I will be able to heal my relationship to, with my sister. So I felt, yeah, it's just confirming that. Hi Zoe, it's really confirming today it's about that topic, yeah. Okay, and any, any other question or so I get started? <laughs> yeah. So I hope you're enjoying the spring, it's 1st of April, so happy, happy, new months and i want to tell you something about today by the way because it's uh in numerology today is a very good day because it's uh f a five five day you know first of april is a five and 2021 20, is a five so we are in five five days so it's a really uh high number a high energy number and I would like you to understand that this 5-5 five five is making 10-1. It's a new start, a new beginning. 5-5 five five is a very uh, high vibrational number for today. So make the most out of it if you can, if you are in a good energy. But you are able to, on this kind of vibration, you're really able to create from your high energy, from your dream, from your human project, your soul project, whatever they are. So really take this into account that it's a day of very high energy if you want to create, if you want to manifest, okay? All right, so let's talk about relationship. Uh, so I was, actually I was writing today about that and, and I really ask, you know, um, about I was clearing something in myself that is um I felt that I was carrying a pattern and I f I really asked about something in my body was painful and 
And the channel answered me it was a relationship issue, but it was not a relationship with people. It's a relationship with yourself. So that that's what was really striking. And um, I felt it was really the key subject of today. Um, anybody wants to ask another question, you're absolutely welcome. So, um, very interestingly, uh, the last moon was a lot about relationship. And then how do you leave the relationship in your life? They are coming really to the stage and what are you what energy are you putting out and what are you receiving what boundaries are you creating in your relationship so that was this energy coming and then i felt like why relationship were on you know on the first stage in our life it's really because because we are growing every day and the energy, as you know, are very high into processing the energy from our soul right now. And we are really allowed to see more and more what our soul wants to carry in the world and, and what um, we are bringing into this life. So basically, um, relationship on the path really bring you like a huge magnet and a huge mirror of what's going on inside yourself so interesting enough when you grow spiritually sorry i'm gonna take this out because it's making noise so when you when you grow spiritually and you're discovering more about yourself and you feel you need to really discover basically a relationship is here for sure to share love friendship etc but it's really here to bring you the mirror of what is in yourself so take that into yourself and I would like you just to breathe and really feel about what relationship right now is brought into my life and really bringing me some turmoil some wondering I mean some question what relationship in your life is really creating a bit of of you know confused energy what should I do with this person uh, or um, how do I, why do I feel smaller when I see this person? Why? And that, that's very interesting also with siblings, you know, very often we see, we feel smaller, we feel arrogant, etc., etc. So let's take one relationship that is really bothering you today and say, okay, this relationship is bringing me some turmoil for sure. Because I'm, you know, I'm not myself or I feel anger or I feel ashamed, blah, blah, blah. You know, we all have our dramas and karmas that are all coming to us more and more because we need them. So basically, uh, what is going on and um, what is going on is that the relationship is bringing you a mirror about who you are inside and actually it's bringing you a mirror of what you have built yourself on which ground you have built yourself which i would what i mean is like when you are a small kid uh to protect yourself from the outside world that is really not uh easy for a soul for a pure heart because the world is really asking you to be different from what you are it's ask, asking you so many many things to be so in order to be able to face all of that the child is needing protection and for that it's really starting to believe in the protection so what happened we create patterns of behavior so for example um i'm a i'm the last of a, a big family and what you're going to think is like, oh, I'm a baby, I'm a young child at heart, and I am protected by this big family. But at the same time, I cannot be 
who I am completely. So it's a mix of being feeling protected by the family, for example, and at the same time, feeling not expressing yourself. So this is a pattern that you're going to bring along all your life, right? So then you have a, re a relationship today. And this relationship is really showing you uh, some kind of instability emotionally. So what happened? You are feeling an emotion. So this emotion is, is actually really, what is this? It is showing you an unstable ground in yourself. It's showing you there is a space where you have a pattern of being that is not you and you are really reacting to a person because this inside of you is not at peace. It's not. Whenever something is not at peace, it means that you are not totally yourself. You are not totally true to yourself. So whenever a relationship comes to you uh, and you are feeling turmoil, it means that it's just define, it's just showing you a definition of yourself that is not real, that is not true. And actually it's showing you that the relationship to yourself needs to improve, needs truth, needs healing, needs uh, a conscious understanding. So we can't, when we have this relationship that is bringing turmoil or confusion, what happened is that you, you don't see, a, 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 you don't see right away for sure. So what happens? It happens like you have a relationship, you, you exchange, you feel this emotional turmoil, and then what happens, you need really to say, okay, I'm not going to jump into it. I'm, I am feeling it and I'm embracing my emotions, but I know deep within myself that I'm realizing something. You know, if you start, if you just say, okay, this emotion is really confusing me, you know, I am not stable, I am not in, in a peace mode, then what is going to happen? You're going to go back home and then have a moment of distanciation from it of saying, okay, in this moment, I'm not completely myself. I need to breathe. I need to come back to my soul. I need to meditate. And in that meditation, what happened is that you're going to just feel what you felt during this uh, exchange. What is this emotional turmoil you are feeling? Okay. And from there, you, you need to write about it. You have to journal about it. What exactly you're feeling? what happened exactly and then let your inner self just be really truthful and in the truth your inner self will start opening the doors of your heart the doors of your inner self the doors of your truth and it may go to the past or, or it usually does and it just explain the situation today explain exactly what you feel and in that way you'll be able to really feel the mechanism of this emotion. And when you feel the mechanism of what you do, what you feel, how people answer to you, so it's also the image of what you are feeling inside, you're gonna start understanding, oh, am I playing a victim here? Or am, am, am I playing arrogance here? Then you're gonna start feeling, okay, this is important in my life. This is, how um, I am, you know, I am reacting to a situation because in my life, in myself, I have not listened to my soul. You know, I have ignored who I was inside. And then this is reminding me when I ignored myself. So then that's why I have to react. This is automatic response of protection. So it's a, it's a bit, I don't know if it's too complicated what I'm saying. And uh, if you want to just react, 
uh, about it, just let me know. So basically, what is very important in all that, in that all the relationship you're living in your life are about what is your relationship with yourself. Are you allowing yourself to, to tell your truth? Are you allowing yourself to discover who you are inside behind those patterns? So when you see a pattern, that's, that's gold. And so the first thing you need to understand is when you start writing about this emotional confusion moment that you have in, with people in your life, what you want to do is start writing and you're going to see more and more what pattern is coming to the surface. So if you have that golden moment of seeing, of understanding a pattern of your attitude, how you react to people, how you react in this in this uh, situation, and then suddenly, you, so you have to write, and the more you write about it, the more you have the truth coming to the surface. Because what is the problem with human being is we hide in ourselves so much because we, we are protected. And the, the, why we hide is because we were, in, we were feeling threatened a while ago. So basically, living, it's, it's really like a chemical process. The, the spiritual process is a chemical process, exactly the same. Is the bubble of energy is coming to the surface. But to, so the, the relationship is basically putting you on fire, you know, and the fire is creating the bubble and the bubble is coming to the surface. So basically, when you meet someone and something happened that is really putting you in, in unstability, you have really to honor that. I, w I wouldn't say enjoy it, but re realize it, realize and be truthful. You know, if someone is upsetting you, it's a gift. It's not, oh my God. I hate this person, I'm going to go and never see her again, you know. It's very interesting that when you are stable in your soul, normally nobody, nobody can disturb you, can disturb you in your bliss. So whenever you know that, you know that when someone is really upsetting you, there's a whole mechanism from your soul to this moment that has been created and it's a chain of reaction. So you go back in time where you felt weak, threatened, etc., by the society, whatever it, whoever was it at that moment, could be the parents, could be the school, could be anything. The, the, the friends, you know, when you're young, friends are really tough. So anyway, from that moment, you create a protection and you create a reaction. So you're angry, you are reacting a certain way so so this is kept inside and then when you you see another when another moment you're aggressed you're going to reduce this protection that has worked for yourself that has protected for yourself so over the years you really accumulate a lot of this reaction right and along the way what happened you uh, you also accumulate judgment so people who are like this i don't like them you know or i don't like this or whatever you are judging so you are just accumulating this judgment that are really securing your attitude and your pattern so you're sure that you're right but what is going on is like you really how do you say you stabilizing this thing that is not true in yourself and you're making it rigid because you judge it more and more and the world is judging like you. So then you're gonna also make friends with people who judge like you. So then you all create a club of, the, of this um, rigidity, a club where everybody judge in the same way. And then you have circles of, of judgment. Oh, I, these people, uh, you know, they like this thing and these people like the other thing. So basically, when you are here today, you are reacting, but you are reacting with all this chain of memories of judgment and reaction that have made you, in a way, a bit of a rigidity. 
And this rigidity is really about uh, blocking your natural, spontaneous being. And it really keeps you, it really keeps you in that and locked you, lock you in a pattern, in a being that is really not helpful, that is really not letting you breathe. So can you imagine that human beings are creating these patterns uh, and attitudes that are just ruining their own joy, their own spontaneity. So the thing is, if I come back to today, relationship, reaction, emotional confusion, emotional turmoil, what is going on? I need to know. I want to know why I'm not stable in that moment because I know when I'm in my soul energy, I am stable. So basically, it's like you have to imagine a chain and you have to imagine that when you go back step by step, you're going to go back to that moment where you were out of the pattern. And, you know, it's not like you're going to work all these years back. It goes fast. Thank God. So, but... You have to know that the ego is very strong because all these judgments have really created rigidity. So to unleash, to release, is really bringing it to reality. And how you do that, you write about yourself. The journaling is the most efficient healing practice you can have. And then I think when you realize something, you have to keep an eye on it. It's not like something you're going to heal and clear for good because that's not human reality. We need to really live this once, twice, and many times until we release it majorly, I would say, because for good never exists in a human life, except if you are, you know, obsessed with living in your soul. So that's, that's, the, that's the next level. And I've been working with you guys on 5D living. So what I call 5D living is about bringing... Okay. Oh, great, Indre. Thank you. It's good to, to read you. It's really bringing this energy of soul. So what I do in the work is really I help people heal the ego and the patterns because we need this emotional release. We need this release from these things we have accumulated. And then at the same time, I love, I love to bring the soul energy. So you have a differentiation where, wow, I feel this soul energy is so good. And I know people here who work with me and, um, you know, they really enjoy that work because we need, we need to feel the soul energy in order for us to go back to that truth where we feel amazing, where we feel the bliss and we don't, need we don't need to really always be in this crazy energy of struggle in your relationship so uh to continue on the subject and um anybody who wants to ask a relevant question would be amazing and all questions are relevant i know so uh wow i have a lot of uh of uh I don't know how to say, but a lot of comments today. So anyway, uh, a lot of colors here. Um, so relationship brings you to relationship with yourself. Always, always, always. And now I want to switch to the... Maybe should I answer this lady who told me, how do I heal the relationship with my sister? So you have to know that um, when you feel this desperate about a healing, you always, always to go inside yourself first. Feel what is going on. Write about it. Be very honest. And then when you are very honest, you'll get more answer and you'll get to the space of surrendering and praying where you really want to heal a relationship. And I promise you that it works. It's 100% efficiency. So I'm going to talk like these people who are selling soaps, but I am selling my soap here. I'm telling you, when you are writing and processing your truth, 
but you have to be 100% truth. And that's the key to efficient process, spiritual process. When you are doing that, and on top of that, you are praying, you are surrendering yourself to the higher self, to the God Goddess energy, you are receiving the energy. You are receiving and you're opening the door to your healing. You're opening the door of your consciousness because when you pray and when you surrender, what it does, it just opens your consciousness to the amazing answers, to amazing field of energy that is waiting behind yourself. Because what it is, as a human being, we have this incredible consciousness and we don't realize because we are obsessed with your, with our life in human life in three dimensions, right? And um, what happens is that we're closing the consciousness to the answers that we are waiting for. It's same thing for manifestation. So praying and surrendering is literally, once you have done your process, is literally opening the doors to the wider consciousness. Because when you pray, when you surrender, you opening the door to a higher consciousness. Hello, hello. Yes, so that's it. Um, anybody who wants um, to answer me to answer a, a spiritual question here? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, Tanya, sorry, I didn't see your question. One second. Yes, relationship are everything. Sophia, thank you for your comment. Yes, so Bernadette, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the relationship with your sister will heal the minute you're doing everything I've said. And re and please go to the replay of this of this uh, live because you have all the keys here. And it's your desire that will heal this relationship. It's, um, you have to understand what is the pattern with your, with your sister? What is the pattern with your family? What is the pattern in your childhood? And you have to really focus yourself on that. And then when you write, you're going to be able to pray and say, I'm ready for the healing with my sister, but I'm, I'm ready for the healing with myself. And this is key. The key is, are you ready to heal your relationship with yourself first? And then you'll be able to really heal the relationship with your sister. And it's the field of healing is absolutely open to yourself, Bernadette. So you don't don't be afraid, don't be blocked, don't be desperate. Desperate, You are on demand the minute you want to heal. All right? So, Tanya, 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 music. How to be yourself with a peace of mind? Sorry, I don't understand what you mean. Um, yes, a better... Okay, let me see... Okay, so could you talk about having a better relationship with yourself? This is a big topic also. <laughs> Very long, by the way. So how I'm going to do that? I totally can do. I'm just, uh, I, I am trying to find answers that are always sharp and not two hours. How do you wake up in the morning? How do you spend your day with yourself? Is absolutely key to knowing what relationship you have with yourself. Are you able to have moments of, of self-love? Are you able to have moment? Sorry, I'm, I'm just wondering. Yeah. Are you able to have moment of bliss, of really feeling, wow, I love my life. I love who I am. So this is really um, what I would call um, a duty, a homework. 
You cannot have a day where you don't have five minutes where you feel at peace with yourself. That's number one. Because if you don't do that, you can't have a relationship with yourself. Because when you don't do that, it means you always live outside of yourself. So the first key to loving yourself, to have a relationship with yourself, is to be able to listen what I am feeling. What is my body saying to me? What is my mind? What is my emotional? If, if you just go about your life and don't listen to anything about your body or your emotional or your mind, it means you, you can't even have a relationship with yourself. Because the relationship with yourself is absolutely the center of everything you're going to leave outside. If you're able to already set up your life around, I am at peace with myself. And this is number one for after everything is come second because if you are at peace with yourself it means you can listen you can understand what you're feeling you know it's like people who are hiding their pains all the time to themselves how can they survive because the energy is very harsh you know and then they are just living outside themselves so that it, it creates more pain and more oblivion and more disconnection. So the connection to yourself starts very much where I can listen. I can spend time and I can meditate. I can listen to music, can have a walk by myself. So solitude, I know people are afraid of solitude, but solitude is a very good way to understand that you are fine with yourself. If you're facing yourself and you, you really have anxiety about being alone, it means you need to spend time to really download what is making you afraid, anxious with yourself. You need to start a conversation. So inside, with inside, you are, inside you are the queen or the king of your life. And you need to really start having that conversation, that peaceful moment. And that's number one. So the, the relationship with yourself, if you're not at ease with yourself, you can't be at ease with anyone because anyone energy is going to come and bring more confusion. You can't, how can I explain? If the, if the ground is shaking, nobody can walk on it. Nobody can come to you. And if it's coming, it, it's going to be a relationship that is shaking. That makes so much sense, right? So you have to really calm the ground in yourself. And in that, you have to be able to create moment of self-care, self-love. Anything fits you, it's okay. We are all very, very different. We can't have the same way of being cared for. You know, some people like to walk, some people like... Uh, spending time in a good bath and listening to music. And some people actually, they love really intense sport or singing or, or just doing an activity that is bringing you to yourself, to your peace, to your joy. So the second thing that is really important, the relationship to yourself is find a way to have activity that you brings you um, joy. Simple joy, you know, like it's cooking or whatever. And if you are not bringing that to your days every day, you're literally not living your life, you know, because it's these moments are really bringing little moments of higher energy of self-love. And these energies are just bringing you back into yourself. And when I say relationship to yourself, it's like, are you listening to who you are? Are you respecting who you are? And if you're not, you can't have a relationship with people that is not gonna, that is going to be peaceful and blissful. It will be always from a shaky ground. You need to calm the ground in yourself. And for that, you need to bring self-respect of your time, of your life, of what you want to do in your life. Does it answer your question enough? But we can go further. Okay. 
I'm gonna look at the question again. Non, ça c'est pas. Ok. Cool. So that's the question, sorry. How to be yourself? Ah, peace of mind. Ok, 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 ok. I didn't know that. Peace like peace, ok. All right. So, um, so, uh, yes, Tanya, are you there? You want me to answer your question? Tanya, Tanya. She answered a question, so now I understand because I was reading it um, and I could not understand. So, how can you be yourself with a peace, with a peace of mind, like peaceful mind? Uh, so the peaceful mind is literally what I was saying, is being able to download all the emotion during, how can I explain? When you leave your day and you have moments that are emotional, if you go back to bed and wake up without clearing them, you'll be carrying them every day. You know, it's not, it doesn't go away. This energy is going to stay in yourself until you really grab it and understand it's time to live. It's time to be embraced. It's time to be healed and understood. Come to the surface of the consciousness like the bubbles. So you can be peaceful in your mind if you take care of what's going on inside yourself. So when you feel an emotion is coming to the surface, what you should do is really be aware. Awareness is literally your healing magic, your healing potential, your healing capacity. If you're not aware, you can't do anything. It's like you're walking with something on the, in the eyes in life and you are carrying your emotion. It's like, oh, I don't see my emotion, but actually it's everywhere in you. So emotional energy, if it's not consciously understood is going to create turmoil in your cells and then it's going to create a disorder at, at many levels. So it's so important to really in the evening and you, if you can do every day, do it every other day. Having a five minutes, say, okay, I felt this. I have to breathe and really breathe out this, this energy of stress, for example. And then being able to feel that this emotion brought you a subject in your life that you are not watching. You have to really be aware that you are feeling emotion. You're not obliged to heal them 100%, but at least you are aware. You're writing it or you're just aware. I think writing is such a powerful thing that if you are using writing, it literally brings these flying emotions <laughs> into a ground, into a paper. It just manifests it somewhere else than the confusing um, airport of emotion that you have in yourself, okay? And this is so important. So if you're allowing yourself to have a moment of reflection, you know, of saying, okay, I have felt that. I'm breathing this emotion in and out and I'm allowing it to just flow in grace outside of myself. If you do that every day, I promise you, you'll be more and more aware of what's going on in your mind and it's going to clear more and more the sky of many clouds. Of When I say airport of emotion, because the emotion, they come, they go, they, you know, you kind of feel like, oh my God, so many emotions, I'm confused. How can I be confused? You are. We can't be at peace if you have so many emotions going on. So the most important is really to start journaling, meditating and breathing the process all the time. Okay, I'm aware, I feel this emotion for this job, for this person, for this experience, or I, I feel emotion when I just see this movie on TV. And I need to know what is it that is creating a turmoil in me. So basically what I'm saying since I started today 
is awareness. What is going on in yourself? What is the artist's emotion? Take a moment every day to breathe. Breathing is the second magical tool. So writing, breathing. You just are aware that you are able to consciously breathe in and breathe out the emotion. Breathing and breathe out the energy that is not suiting yourself, that is impeding you to be free. You get it? Is that good? Um, Rushi Richada. Emotions are not stronger than you. And that's something you need to understand. The problem is because we let ourselves accumulate so many emotions that we are confused. Then we think we, have not mas we are not masterful. We can't master our emotion. It's because the ground of yourself is too confused because you have never cleared, you know, right? You understand what I mean? It's about being aware and try to clear as much as you can. Chada, did you, uh, Rushi or Chada, I don't know which one is your first name. Did you get it? Yes. So I think I'm going to close the live very soon. So let me know if there is one more question you want to go through. Let me check. Okay, question here. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you. Sophia, come on um, Sunday night live. Anyway, yes. Okay, Rushi, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So uh, it was really about relationship and relationship with yourself. So I'm touching basically on this subject here. I cannot, you know, expand so long on it, but I hope you're getting, you know, glimpse of energy and glimpse of teaching that will help you during the day. At least if you get one thing that has an impact on you, it will really become an incredible uh, moment where you can start healing something, clearing something, feeling lighter. Say, yes, I understand. I have this relationship. It creates confusion. What does it mean? Does it mean my relationship with myself is poorly these days? Etc. Etc. So if you can just grab one thing we said today and say, okay, I'm going to act on it and just try to experiment you know, experiment, go back, have a moment of breathing and writing. And tonight before going to sleep, just say, okay, I'm going to review my day. What emotion is too strong and I need to breathe it out of myself. Ah, okay. Yeah, it could be Praya and Nama. Any kind of breathing exercise is working. I believe that so many traditions are bringing breathing in a brilliant way. You always have to try the one that corresponds to you or your culture. Thank you, Aswini. Uh, Christina, does a pain in any specific part of the body is related to... Does a pain... It has... Yeah, right. Maria Christina... Any pain of the, in any specific part of the body is a crystallization of an energy that you didn't resolve at a certain time in your life. And it is an energy of blocking who you are. It is an energy where you didn't listen to what your soul wanted you to do, to be, etc., it's a place where you have stopped yourself from being yourself. It's a place where you have changed your energy in order to suit the world. So if in a relationship you had to transform yourself because you were afraid or ashamed or whatever, and if you continue to do this pattern of, of uh, attitude, and then it really creates low energy yourself, and then the low energy has to go somewhere. That's the thing. 
It's like people who suffer in a relationship and they're still there and they suffocate. This energy, because basically you're saying to your soul, I'm sorry, I can't be myself. I can't be free. I can't be honest to myself. So this energy of non-true, of, of um, it needs to go somewhere. And that's how it really crystallizes into the body. That's why when you see something appear in the body, it's, it's like, a, you know, it's like a process in time where it has come to you in your mind, in the sign, etc., etc., and then it goes somewhere. And what it is, it's like you look at, you need to look at the symbolism of what is this pain in the body means, means to you. I mean, in general, you, there are a lot of books. If you look at uh, Louise Hay, but also many people have written about the meaning of one specific pain in one specific place in the body. When you want, and this is fascinating, because when you want to know about it, you have to start searching. You're really a researcher of your truth. It's literally like uh, you've been on a journey to understand what it is. And it, it's, it's really a researcher. You have to understand, you have the lamp on your forehead and you're going into the mine. You're gonna mine that diamond what it is that I have refused to be. And this diamond, you have to find it. So it's very, actually, it's painful, but it's fascinating. Because if you search and research, you will always find it. So what you do, Maria Cristina, you start searching, you start feeling this pain, you start, start writing to yourself what it is, what does it mean? Where did I leave myself? Where did I not listen to myself? Where did I impose myself something that was not right for me? And you will be surprised how much you're gonna get. And it, you, you, you can't be impatient. Then you get books about the symbolism of that pain, okay? Where it is, in the body, in, the, in wherever, in the arm, in the feet, blah, blah, blah. Right side, left side. Feminine side or, or, I mean, masculine side or feminine side, you know? Um, is it in the lymphatic system, you know, where it's really retaining water because you can't, you're afraid, etc. It's, it's so many symbolism about a pain, but it's going to bring you a lot of information. And this information will help you to understand. And it's literally like, it's a mining because what we do is the pain is here, but the, I mean, it's here, for example, or here, it depends. It's like layers of what you've done in the past. So you're going to understand more and more what you've done in the past. You see what I mean? And, or you're going to be, a, a pain is also um, the end of a journey of so many attitude and patterns. So you have to listen and then you're going to pray and surrender and receive more and more knowledge about why. And then healing it is so important because the body cannot survive with the pain. You know, I don't, I don't believe in pain. Living in pain, I don't believe in it. I think we always need to get it. And if you don't, I tell you, we don't get it in a second, everything. Okay. We, it's, it's a pass. It's a patient path, but the more you believe in it, the more answers come to you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. If you love the work, it will help you back. It's also very interesting. Thank you, Mara Christina. It's great. Yep. Yeah, so the body is really literally like... Um, a magnifier of of the energy of the soul of the ego etc so yeah we, we are here so i'm gonna leave you girls and guys and thank you for coming i hope you enjoyed it uh you know it's gonna be regular i love to teach and i love to clarify stuff for your mind and spirit heighten the energy so 
I don't know about the timing though. What is the time? Is the timing good for the day for you? Let me know and then I'll be able to leave. I hope Tanya, you understand my answer. So I see you on Sunday and um, yes, and also I'm gonna do a oh, great Indre, thank you. I'm gonna do the webinar about how to attract your soulmate and what does it mean really? Because I don't want to fall into the, you know, as a, as a teacher and healer, I, I love to help people. But I really also want to bring to the attention, not to fall in the trap of how to manifest, how to bring the dream, da, da, da. Because I want to bring you to the truth of everything. And how to attract your soulmate is a very beautiful subject. Because it's really, it's really about how to get in touch with your true self and be able to magnetize the person that is going to help you be more of who you are in this lifetime. Okay. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much, uh, Ellen. Yeah. Lots of love. Uh, this is finishing. Uh, go Lots of love. Have a great day. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Ah, j'ai compris. Je viens de comprendre. Lots of love. No more question and I see you soon. Ciao, ciao.